I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Perfection. Once you start making your own shea butter homemade mix, that's it, you're hooked. And it only took me one batch to convince myself that I will never need to buy another store-bought cream, butter, lotion, none of that. Nada. Because what I have made is so much better, and I'm not just saying it because I made it. I'm not just saying it to fool you into anything. I literally gained nothing out of this. But if you're already a fan of body butters and whipped butters and oils, like I am, then this may be for you, so let me show you how I make it. And it smells so good, so. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Let's get into it. If you've watched any of my body maintenance videos, especially the last one that I just uploaded before this one, you know that I'm a big fan of shea butter in itself, so I wouldn't recommend replacing this recipe with any other butter. Like, I know there's a lot of them, like cocoa butter, mango butter, and so many others. The one I'm making today is very simplified for my own skin type, which is dry, sensitive, and I have keratosis pilaris. And for those of us that struggle with KP, you know the struggle is real. And shea butter has been one of the things that I've been using for a few years now because it helps soothe my skin and reduce the appearance of scarring that I often get from having KP. And I used to buy shea butters like these that came packaged already, but they weren't whipped. They were just raw shea butter, which also works. It works great. But raw shea butter can be very thick and it has that strong nutty smell, which doesn't bother me, but it does bother a lot of people. And in the past, I've always been been a huge fan of whipped body butters. Oftentimes, the whipped body butters that I find in stores contain ingredients like coconut oil and several other oils that are not compatible to my skin type. If you have any type of body acne or KP like I do, I strongly recommend you avoid ingredients on your body that contain coconut oil. I do not put coconut oil on my face and I do not put it on my body because I will immediately break out. That is why. I decided to start making my own so that I can get that same feeling from the store-bought butters that are so smooth and perfectly whipped. We're gonna do that today very simply with simple ingredients, organic ingredients, and a customizable scent to your own liking. So I purchased this big five pound block of shea butter, which is raw, unrefined, and it's made in Ghana, which is where you should be sourcing it. If it's not made in Ghana, Africa, throw it away. I don't want it. Other than your shea butter, you will need a bowl like this one so you can whip your ingredients in and something to whip your butter once you've blended all of the ingredients to give it that whipped look and feeling. And I'll be measuring my portion with a scale, but you certainly don't have to use one. I'll be giving you the measurements through ounces as well. That is at zero. Whenever I make this, I make it for two of these jars. These are mason jars. Each one of these is 250 ml, which is one cup each. And it'll look like this. This is the previous one that I've made. And this is a really good size. I keep one in my bathroom and one in my kids' bathroom because I use it on my kids from head to toe, face, hair, and body. Shea butter is really easy to cut not a hard butter at all, unlike cocoa butter, which is very hard. And I'll be going for eight ounces today, because eight ounces of this butter is enough for two jars. And now I'm just gonna warm up my butter a little bit so that it's easier to work with and we can whip it later. How am I gonna warm this up? Not the microwave, not the oven. We're gonna use the double boiler method because it is the safest way to warm up our shea butter without decreasing the quality and the benefits that we want from shea butter. And I'm sorry to tell you, but if you are using the microwave for your food, for any recipes or ingredient purposes, please stop. I have a microwave. I just never use it for anything other than storage or hiding things from my kids that I don't want them to get into. I will link some information down below on why you shouldn't use it if you're interested in looking at that. But this double boiler method is much more gentle and it'll warm up our butter with indirect heat. We're only warming it up a little bit just so it's easier to work with and go to the next process. And when you notice most of your butter is melted, remove it off the heat right away because you want to have some of those clumps left still because it will melt pretty quickly. And I'm only using two oils today, which is jojoba oil and rosehip seed oil. And I use jojoba oil because jojoba oil is the best oil to use for any body and skin purposes overall. No matter what skin type you have, jojoba oil is the most compatible oil to our own human natural oil production. And if you're acne prone, this is the best oil to use because it helps balance the oils that your body is producing. Because jojoba is so compatible to our skin, people with oily skin can actually 
balance their oil production by using jojoba oil. It basically tricks your skin to thinking it's already produced enough. So jojoba oil is a must. Rosehip seed oil. This one's very important because it's high in beta carotene, which is vitamin A, and a vitamin A deficiency has been linked to people with keratosis pilaris, which is what I have. And on top of that, rosehip seed oil is a really great oil to help even out your skin tone overall. So if you have any discoloration, hyperpigmentation, or scarring, this is a great oil to use. If you saw my recent video on body care maintenance, I'm obsessed with this oil. So if you can include this in your shea butter mix, definitely do because it's only going to help your skin look more even toned and flawless. The last thing I want to add, which you don't have to if you don't want to, you can keep this unscented to your liking. But these are three essential oils that I really like in my shea butter mix. Because I like citrusy scents, I have two that I really like. This is a blood orange organic essential oil. If you don't know what blood orange smells like, just think of orange peels. It's exactly what blood orange smells like. And I used the blood orange essential oil in my previous shea butter right here. So I'm not gonna use that one today just so this one smells a little different. And another one that I like is the organic bergamot, which is another citrus uh, scent, but it's a more lemony, fruity citrus. And I really love the way bergamot smells. I put this in a lot of my hair DIYs. And lastly, I recommend French lavender essential oil. But French lavender smells stronger than just regular lavender essential oil. So I always love getting French lavender because of that. And this is the one I'll be using in this one today, which will be really nice for nighttime after my nightly shower. This is also perfect if you have a four-year-old girl like me. This is a really nice way to make her feel like I'm giving her something very adulty and scented before bed, but it's also really good for her skin. So I'll be adding quite a few drops of lavender. Here's another great option if you want to help preserve your shea butter mix. Then you can get a small jar of pure vitamin E oil and add about two teaspoons, but I'm not going to add that today because I've already made this many times. The vitamin E oil that I currently have is mixed with a bunch of other oils and I want to reduce the amount of ingredients that go into my shea butter so that I know exactly what's going on my body. And if I have a negative effect or any type of flare up on my body, I will be able to link exactly which ingredient did that because I know what I used. But if you buy a vitamin E oil, that has like sunflower oil, coconut oil, and a bunch of other things added to it, then it'll be really hard to narrow down what caused your flare up. So make sure all of your ingredients are pure as one ingredient only for each product. Just something to keep in mind. Now I just give it a little stir, nothing too crazy. And I'm gonna pop this into the fridge because it is better to whip it up when it's a little bit solidified. So we're gonna pop this in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. And you can see that the shea butter forms a little bit of a cast as it chilled. And that cast that it formed here tells you that we still preserve the integrity and quality of the shea butter even though we warmed it up. So let's get it. What is going on? It's not plugged in. And to store it, you can place it in a smaller jar like this one, which is just one cup quantity like I did with the previous one. This is enough for two of these, or you can get yourself a two cup jar, which will fit all of it with my silicone spatula, which makes everything very easy to put inside. See how that just scoops up and doesn't even fall apart. And I'm just placing this in my jar. And what you wanna do is hit it a little bit with your hand so they can bring everything down to the bottom and remove some of those spaces. And these silicone spatulas are best because it scoops everything out so that you're not wasting anything at all. How perfect is that? Perfection. And that's all folks, that is how I make my homemade shea butter mix. Perfect for all skin types, but especially dry, damaged, sensitive, and those with keratosis pilaris, like myself. It is super moisturizing, very, very good for your skin. For me, it's just made my skin look healthier, and I hope that it helps you too. And like I said, great for the whole family as well. So something like this is really perfect for travel. This was like a sample that I got from a honey company, and the jar is really cute and small, and it has this gold top. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you wanna see more DIYs, let me know down below. 
and subscribe to my channel for whatever's coming next. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, sunshine.